Okay, so we have a question here that states the gradient of any line perpendicular to JK is. We have the options. Okay, so first off, the location of the endpoints. J is located at negative 5 on the x-axis. And negative 5 on the y-axis. So we have the two axes, the x-axis that runs horizontally and the y-axis which runs vertically. The location of j is negative 5 on x, negative 5 on y. The location of the point k, both axes, is negative 2 on the x-axis and negative 1 on the y-axis. Now for us to find the gradient of this line, we can use a formula or we can use even without the coordinates look here, we can just simply use rise over run. Okay, so let's find a gradient using the, the formula itself. So we have this label, let's call this x1, y1. These are the x and y coordinates of the first point, j. For the second point, k, we use x2, y2. The ones indicating that this is j is the first point, the twos indicating that this k is the second point. But in terms of coordinates, we have the x and y location, x and y location. In terms of the gradient, m, we have the formula y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. It's okay if you have y1 minus y2 divided by x1 minus x2, as long as you have the right numbers in the same order for the x and y. Okay, so either one of these is fine. Just remember the order. Y1, start with Y1, you start with y, X1. If you start with Y2, ensure you start with X2. But the Ys are always on top, and the Xs must be below. All right, let's use the first formula that we have there instead. There must be a minus sign. The y, second Y coordinate in this case is gonna be negative one minus the first y coordinate that we have is negative five. Then we can put this in bracket if we want to separate the minus from the negative. And for the denominator we have, well we don't have to put brackets though, but it's a good practice to do that. In terms of x2 minus x1, x2 will be negative two, subtract x1 which is negative five. And again, we can use bracket as our separator there. Now when we subtract a negative, we get positive. So let's simplify this. Be negative one. Now subtracting a negative give you positives. So give it positive five, divide the minus two. Subtracting a negative again, that's positive. And so simplifying further, negative one plus five. The signs are different. And so we're gonna get um, four, find the difference, which is four. And keep the sign of the five, since five, we have more positive than negative. Same thing with the negative 2 and plus 5. We're going to find the difference between them since we have different signs. And we have more positive, so keep positive. So our gradient is 4 fifths. So the gradient of JK is 4 fifths. Small as an M for that. Not 4 fifths, but 4 thirds. My bad. So this is the gradient of the line JK. But were we asked if for the gradient of the line JK or a or a line parallel to JK. So if there's another line that's parallel to JK, it will have the same gradient of four, fifth, of four thirds. And this would have been the answer if they'd ask us to find a gradient of a line parallel to JK. If a line is parallel to JK, then that means it will have the same slope as JK. But that's not what we were asked. We were asked to find the gradient of a line that is what? Perpendicular. And perpendicular meaning that the gradients will be the negative reciprocal of each other. So a line that's running perpendicular to this one will meet or pass through it at 90 degrees. But what will be the gradient of this line? Well, if the gradient of this line is 4 thirds, the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to it will be the negative reciprocal. So we'll look at this fact, we'll look at the fact that this gradient is positive. So the gradient of this one must be a negative gradient. And a reciprocal mean that we're gonna turn the numerator to the denominator, 
denominator to the numerator. In other words, reciprocate the fraction. So 3 goes on top instead and 4 goes below. If one is positive, the other will be the negative. And of course, a line that slopes this way, right, from left to right downwards, is always going to be a negative gradient. And so the gradient for this is negative 3 over 4. So this is the correct option. Any line that's perpendicular to this line here, such as this one, will have a gradient of negative 3 fourths, the negative reciprocal of that one. Let's look at another example. Okay, so here we have this line, RS. Let's find its gradient. Well, again, we could use, look at the coordinates of R. Location of R is negative 3 and positive 2. The location of S is on the x-axis is 3 and on the y-axis is negative 1. Using the formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Change in the y's over change in the x. So it's a rate of change of y with respect to x. Okay, so in terms of the y, we let's label. If we call this the first point, then we'll be x1, y1. This will be x2, y2. And a comma between those. Okay, so in terms of the y2, y2 is negative 1. What about the minus sign? y1 is positive 2. Then x2 is going to be 3, but minus sign, and then we look for x1, which is negative 3. Now, we, are, we have negative 1 minus 2. If you have negative 1 on the number line, and you subtract 2, you're going to go two places to the left. So that would be negative 2, negative 3. So this will be negative 3. So in other words, signs are the same. You add the numbers and keep the sign. Now, instead of subtracting a, a negative, that's going to be a plus. When I subtract negative, that'd be a plus. And so that's 3 plus 3, which is 6. And that will give us um, negative in, divided by positive is negative. 3 goes into itself once and into 6 twice, so that's negative a half. So the gradient of this line, RS, is a half. Now, any line that's parallel to it will also have a same gradient of um, negative a half, right? Same gradient, just that they would have different y-intercept. However, however, that's not what we ask. We're not asked about the line that's parallel to it. We ask about the line that's perpendicular. So it would not have the same gradient as this line. The gradient of this line, as we said, is negative a half. All right. And just quickly, in case you want to find out how we, else we could do it, we can start at the end points and form a right angle underneath. So we go downwards here. We try to get to the other end point. So we form a 90 degree angle. And then we'll use rise over run. So this is the rise. And this will be the run. All right. So the rise is the vertical distance between R and S, which will be, um, let's see, 1, 2, 3 units. So my gradient is my rise over run. And the rise is uh, 3 units. Right? 1. Two, three. Just count the size of the boxes, the, the squares, I should say. So one, two, three. And let's count the size of the squares again, going horizontally. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's six. And in terms of the sign, because this is going from left to right downwards, then it's been negative. So let's give us a negative a half, dividing the top and bottom by common factor of three. Okay, so we get the same negative a half for the gradient. Okay, now, what about a line that runs perpendicular to this line? That's, that's what we were asked for, too, a line that runs perpendicular to this. So in a line that runs perpendicular to it, that in other words meeting at 90 degrees, would have, an, would have a, a, a gradient of what? Okay, so any line that's perpendicular. So I could draw one like this as well, too, if I wanted to. All right, it's a sketch, though. It doesn't have to be accurate. It would be the negative reciprocal. So since this gradient is negative a half, a line such as this one that probably passes through like this somewhere, right? Its gradient will be the negative reciprocal. Now, since this one is negative, obviously this line is sloping downwards from left to right, while this line is sloping upwards from left to right. So this will have a positive gradient. And with the reciprocal of this one, 
1 over 2, the reciprocal is 2 over 1. And of course, we know 2 over 1 is the same thing as 2. And so that would be the answer, D. If we were to go back, though, and look at this one, right, just in terms of using the rise over run principle to calculate the gradient, we could have done this the same, similar, in a similar fashion. Draw a line, right angle underneath it, two endpoints, that is. This would be the what? The horizontal run. This would be the vertical rise upwards, right? So in terms of the run, <coughs> you're looking at scale, it's one unit apart. So it would be one, two, three. And the rise will be one, two, three, four. So when you look at the gradient being rise over run, the rise is going to be four units. One, two, three, four. Run is three. And of course, it's looping upwards from left to right, so it's positive. So this is another way to find the gradient of this particular um, line here. But in terms of the answer we're looking for again, it was a perp any perpendicular line to this one. So we would reciprocate, so we three quarters, and it would have opposite sign of negative. Now, if this video was good for you, please like, subscribe, share. Thank you. Have a great day.